Space, the final frontier. These are the storage needs of our media enterprise. Our continuing mission, to engage strategic new work, to seek out new ethernet implementations, to backup data like no one has done before. Welcome back to TechSpin, and Asus Store shipped over a drive store for and a bunch of new Seagate NAS drives for us to test and use. Our DIY NAS running on RAID does have its limitations, and this cube may solve some issues with our teleporters or uh, multi-user remote access that there is no easy workaround for in Unraid. This may prove a better solution, but what else can an off-the-shelf NAS offer that's better than DIY? And for a fast RAM solution, which doesn't require assimilation, is our sponsor, Team Group. Team Group is perfect for your memory needs with DDR4 and DDR5 T-Force Delta RGB sticks, Vulkan DDR4 and DDR5, M.2 and SATA SSDs. Check them out at the links below. Just a reminder, if this video helps you, please hit that like and subscribe. Give us a quick follow on social media. And if you have some questions or find some good tech you want us to check out, leave your comments down below. Updates for our reviews are on the companion posts on TechSpinReview.com. If you want a NAS as a fast file server on your network or to backup files, the Asus Store Drive Store 4 is a great entry-level NAS with decent build quality, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and you can download, upload, and stream with 4K transcoding. Also, you can connect USB devices like hard drives, printers, UPS, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongles. It's equipped with a 120 millimeter fan, and it's got a quick, easy interface. Setting up a group, new user, and getting remote access took under 10 minutes pretty fast. The software on the NAS has possibilities, but don't expect much as this drive store 4 is entry level, though music, video, streaming, and even Jellyfin is possible. There are Android apps also which require more testing on my part. With a compact form factor, the drive store 4 really sips power, so it won't add much to your power bill. So if you're looking for an entry level NAS with a little added functionality, this is a great option. Others needing more power and capability like running VMs would need something higher up or more tailored for these requirements. So this Asus Store Drive Store 4 handles up to four NAS hard drives with a Realtek RTD 1296 quad-core CPU at 1.4 gigahertz and one gig of DDR4 RAM with a fast 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. We have four six terabyte Seagate IronWolf NAS drives thanks to Asus Store. Inside is the box with cables and the Drive Store 4 NAS is pretty well padded with lots of foam and plastic wrap to protect it in shipping. Peeling off the front plastic, we get to see the patterned front. Inside the cardboard box, we get a power brick, a typical IEC power cord to connect to the brick, and an 145 centimeter long ethernet cable and a cable fastener, along with a quick start guide. This is my second take on opening the case. I had to grab a Phillips screwdriver to help as the screws were on fairly tight from the factory. Even though this is a toolless design, usually first time out of the box, you can expect to need to use a screwdriver as that's how cases are assembled and is typical industry-wide. With the four rear screws off, we'll rotate the case so the ports are at the bottom and the cover slides back and comes off easily. Turning the drive store 4 around, you can see the back plane for connecting the rear of the drives to the main board. Next, we'll put in the drives, bottom first, just so I can see if there are any alignment issues, but these went in very smoothly. Next, go in the screws on both sides. I found using a Phillips on camera for the bottom screw helpful as it's a little close to the bottom plate. Next, the cover goes on, back slightly, then slide forward, and the screws are pretty easy to put back in. Last step will be to connect the power and plug in the network cable to the drive store 4. You need to download Asus Store Control Center from the website download page. After a quick install, we're going to initialize the NAS. It's great that it has a dark theme right out of the gate, and we're choosing the one-click setup method. Next page, you need a login admin name other than admin, choose the shortest possible password and plan to change it to strong later, and your data storage requirements. Maximum capacity is RAID 0, superior data protection is RAID 6, and balanced is RAID 5, what I chose. If you chose custom setup, you'll have RAID 1, 10, and JBOD options, and I'll quickly go over RAID later. Setting up the RAID array takes time, so the first night if your NAS appears very busy, it's because it's building the array. Building an array isn't the same as a quick format on a Windows disk. It needs to read from all drives installed and then calculate the parity for each sector. For a four terabyte drive, this could be up to a day, eight terabytes would be around two days, and so on. First thing we're going to do is make sure we have the latest OS installed, the Asus Store Data Master or ADM. Asus Store is upgrading their setup. I didn't have luck with an update on config or with update now, so I'll choose manual update, and choose the file that I've downloaded from their website, this ARM image file. 
The update went smoothly, and then it auto restarts. Dr. Asistore runs a health check on your system, great as it prompts you to install both antivirus and schedule that, as well as pushing you to think about backing up this data, so that's pretty welcome. After all this was done, I set up an Asus Store ID in the bottom registration option. Then in Easy Connect, I enable the service, set a cloud ID, and it gives me a custom URL, which is helpful. Not readily apparent, but you can click on these QR codes to take you to the page on Apple's App Store and Google Play to install the different available mobile software. From here, I set up a new group, new users, added a new folder, and was able to share it on the network and access it remotely in about 10 minutes. Don't forget to set all the security permissions for the group, user, and folder that you're giving access to. You can also customize the login screen, which is pretty great. Now, we did actually spend a bunch of time on Android app testing. Asus Store seems to be upgrading this as it wants to use the older yourcloudid.myasus.com, so we'll bring this up with them in our feedback. Important to note that the apps need companion software installed on the Drive Store for also, as shown here. On to power savings, and over a DIY NAS, they are substantial. For comparison, our DIY NAS, link up here, uses an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X with 8 gigs of DDR4 on an Asus Strix B450F gaming board with four 4TB four drives. On boot, we saw 115 to 120 watts, first access idle, 92 watts, and with disk spun down, roughly 55 watts. Shut off, we see a 1.5 watt drain, so I wonder if there's a powered USB port happening or something. On boot, we see the drive store 4 mostly in the 20 to 28 watt range with a couple of spikes, max was 46 watts. After the beep indicating it's online, the first access idle is between 23 to 26 watts. At full idle, which means drives have spun down and you're not using the web interface, it's sitting at 6.9 watts and off 0 watts. So we drop to 75% less power consumption or more than my DIY NAS, and this is really fantastic. Are the four 6TB Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives cooled well? The fairly silent rear 120mm fan cools the unit. The default auto setting has drive idle temps at 38 Celsius at 22.2 watts idle. Ambient temp is 24 degrees. Medium speed has a small increase in noise. The drives are 5 degrees cooler at 33 with 22.8 watts draw. High speed, the fan is pretty noticeable and drives are 31 degrees at 24.2 watts. If RAID is new to you, for most users, the balanced option, RAID 5, will be best. But let's quickly explain RAID, as each has pros and cons. JBOD is just a bunch of disks, so pros, 100% capacity. Cons, no speed increase, and when a drive fails, that single drive's whole data is gone. RAID 0 splits writes across the drives, so files have chunks on different hard drives. Pros, 100% capacity, and write speed almost doubles to 240 megs a second, reads around 270 megs a second. Cons, if a drive dies, the whole array dies. That's all data over all drives, so not recommended. RAID 1 is a mirrored copy of each drive, writes from 170 to 230 megs a second, reads 250 to 270 megs a second. Pros, one drive can fail, and replacing the drive is much faster as it copies data back from the mirrored drive. Cons, 50% total capacity, as half your hard drives are used as mirrored drives. RAID 10 combines RAID 1 and 0 together, requiring four or more drives. Pros, near the speed of RAID 0, with mirrored backup, you can lose one drive, and rebuilding time is much faster. Cons, 50% storage capacity for the mirrors. RAID 5 requires three or more hard drives, and writes parity bits of data across all installed drives, using up one drive worth of space. Pros, good write speed around 230 to 250 megs a second, with reads 250 to 270 megs a second, and one drive can fail without data loss. Cons, rebuilding the array from parity takes up to a day for a 4 terabyte drive. With three hard drives, you'd have 66% capacity, with four drives, 75%. RAID 6 requires four or more hard drives, and writes double parity across all drives. More overhead means slower writes, reads are near RAID 5 level. Pros, two drives can fail. When you're rebuilding an array from parity, you can run into an error which prevents the rebuild with RAID 5, so this level has a much higher probability of finishing. Cons, two whole drives of space are used for parity. Yeah, man, we won again. So there's always a trade-off for each RAID level. For most users, the balanced RAID 5 will be sufficient, giving a decent trade of speed and capacity for the ability to lose just one drive. If your NAS is going to be your main storage and your data is critical, you should plan to have a backup of this, too. 
Remember that hard drives have a typical lifespan of three to five years, but can fail at any time. And it's not if they will fail, but when. By the way, Seagate has made a great calculator that explains each level, and you can play with configurations. The link is in the description for this nice tool. Please take a moment to hit like, get subscribed, and click the bell. It supports us making new episodes, and you'll get notified when we release new videos. Do what it, do what it. <laughs> you may be looking at this drive store for just for file storage, but what functions do you really need? If you need the basics with remote access and 4K media streaming, the Drive Store 4 is optimized for this, and you definitely save yourself the headache, time, and money on your power bill over a DIY. For me, I spent a month researching, sourcing parts, assembling, testing, and troubleshooting my DIY NAS. With an AMD CPU and Unraid, there was a learning curve, as the CPU, of course, didn't have onboard graphics, uh, didn't play well at first, Unraid sometimes glitched, and I've been in the settings menus way too much. For improvement, number one is the one gig of DDR4 RAM. It's currently at 60% utilization. It was 80% during RAID initialization. Preventing upgrading with whatever RAM you want improves reliability and removes support issues, but limits what you can do. I prefer to have a slot and a take your own risk approach, or Asus Store could recommend modules they've tested. We've seen PC cases choked by solid panels and small intakes, and NAS hard drives need good airflow. With a 120mm fan, the drive store for small bottom intake and drive cage with its solid walls does force air up and over the drives and temps are well in spec, though I'd like to see a bigger filtered intake. On auto fan speed, the drives idle at 38 degrees and removing the case cover lowered this to 36 degrees, so there's a little room for improvement here. Cover on, the medium fan speed uses about a half watt more for 5 degrees cooler, though I think it won't speed up if the drives get hot. So I'd like to see a custom or more aggressive auto fan profile and would like to have drive temps pulled into system information so you can see all the temps in one place. There's a couple of Android app things to iron out, but this drive store 4 just works. With a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, it saves a ton of time and effort and also about $400 to $500 over a DIY. Plus the footprint is so much smaller and there's over 75% cost savings when it comes to power. If you do decide to pick this Drive Store 4 or another model up on Amazon, shopping through our affiliate links below will help us here with no extra cost to you. And follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Techspin Review, and there's companion posts for these videos on TechspinReview.com. Thanks again for Asus Store for sending over the Drive Store 4 along with the hard drives for testing. Coming up on Techspin, we're doing a Steel Series keyboard review, and it's looking pretty good. A big thanks to Team Group for being our sponsor. They're a leading solution in DDR4 and DDR5, and they won't break the bank, and you can check them out at the link below. Find something good or want some tech reviewed? Join the discussion in the comments. Please take a second to hit like, subscribe, the bell, and we often reply to your feedback, so if you have a question, fire away. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.